afternoon session. Professor Eric Stark Maskin, Mr. Uwe Moraves, distinguished guests, University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce administrators, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the spatial lecture on why global markets have failed to reduce inequality. Once again, it is a great honor for our university to host such a special speech by the Nobel laureate. And in a very short time, we will start with a welcome remark by Assistant Professor Dr. Sawani Thayrung Road. May I call upon Dr. Sawani Thayrung Road to give her welcome remark? Professor Eric S. Maskin, UTCC administrators, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce, may I welcome all of you to our special lecture co-organized by University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce and the International Peace Foundation. This special lecture is held as one of the activities of UTCC Academic Week, which is organized to be the week when UTCC faculties and students from all schools of UTCC will present their papers in addition to special lecture on why global markets have failed to reduce inequality, which I would like to thank Professor Eric S. Maskin for accepting the invitation to join the academic week by giving the lecture which will become the highlight of this event. UTCC has already organized 18 series of special lectures, most of them through the cooperation with the International Peace Foundation to hold special lectures from Nobel laureates for economics. In the past, we have had the honors from many Nobel laureates as follows. Professor James Heckman, 2000 Nobel laureate. Professor Robert A. Mandel, 1999 Nobel laureate. Professor Finn E. Kitlan, 2004 Nobel laureate. And Professor um, Engel, 2003 Nobel laureate. As well as Mr. James D. Wolfenson, former president of the World Bank. UTCC is proud to work with International Peace Foundation in building up a culture of peace which can be achieved through broad international cooperation among higher education institutes by creating network and partnerships with a broad range of institutions, organizations, educationalists and researchers, as well as with civil society at large. In the lecture today, Professor Eric Maskin, 2007 Nobel laureate for economics, will lead you all to the insight of why global markets have failed to reduce inequality. A great deal of talk is heard these days about the problem of inequality, also about globalization. Is it true that globalization create, create new pressure of inequalities within countries? and how, please follow. May I thank Professor Eric S. Maskin, Mr. Uwe Molawes, Chairman of International Peace Foundation, honorary guests, participants, and audiences. I truly believe this lecture will provide a good forum, motivation, and inspiration for interesting people and public. All through this lecture, I can picture all of you as a caravan of peacemakers moving along the road to equality and harmonious world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sawani Tairungro, the Vice President for Research. And at this auspicious moment, I'd like to invite Mr. Uwe Moraves to give the 
opening address. Sawadikap and welcome to the third ASEAN event series, Bridges, Dialogues Towards a Culture of Peace. Bridges is facilitated by the International Peace Foundation, a non-political and non-religious foundation under the patronage of 21 Nobel Peace Prize laureates based in Vienna, Austria. The events are hosted in cooperation with various local partners, including the country's major universities. Having started in November last year, Bridges will now be continuously held in Thailand, the Philippines, and Cambodia until April this year, involving the participation of Nobel laureates from all fields as well as other eminent keynote speakers. The third ASEAN series of Bridges is an independent contribution to the Decade for Culture of Peace and Nonviolence which was initiated by the United Nations General Assembly. It follows the series of 350 Bridges events, which the International Peace Foundation has already hosted in Thailand, the Philippines, and Malaysia since 2003. The pluralistic program of Bridges highlights the International Peace Foundation's intercultural and transdisciplinary approach towards peace. The foundation does not take sides, but acts as a mediator by creating an independent platform for dialogue where representatives of science, culture, politics, religion, the media, and youth can meet, share their viewpoints, listen to each other, and find mutual ways of understanding and cooperation. Therefore, the foundation itself is a bridge and a facilitator between different language groups in our divided societies where politicians speak another language than artists and business and religious leaders another one than scientists. In a highly interdependent world, problems cannot be solved only by one of these language groups only, but by finding ways of working together. After the success of bridges in Thailand, the Philippines, and Malaysia, the International Peace Foundation has now been invited by other ASEAN countries to build further bridges towards peace and international understanding by expanding its program in Southeast Asia to stimulate the intellectual, scientific, and cultural exchange in the region. The aim of bridges is to facilitate and strengthen dialogue and communication between societies in Southeast Asia with their multiple cultures and faiths, as well as with peoples in other parts of the world. The aim of Bridges is to promote, therefore, understanding and trust. It aims at building bridges with local universities and other institutions in Southeast Asia to build long-term relationships with Nobel laureates in all fields which may result in common research programs and other forms of collaboration. By enhancing science, technology, and education as a basis for peace and development, the events may lead to a better cooperation for the advancement of peace, freedom, and security in the region with the active involvement of the young generation, ASEAN's key to the future. This is why Bridges is not designed as a one-time conference or event and then everything is over again and forgotten, but as a continuing process of synergies to make this series of events a sustainable success, success for Thailand, for Cambodia, for the Philippines, and for Southeast Asia as a whole. I'm grateful to the president, Dr. Chiradet Osawat, and the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce as well as to our other partners and sponsors who have enabled us to make the idea of Bridges a reality. I would like to say thank you to everyone present today for taking part in this program. May it help us to facilitate a new culture of peace through dialogue, transcending its definition as merely the absence of war or armed conflict, 
into a new understanding what the basis for peace is, education. In this spirit, we welcome today the 2007 Nobel Laureate for Economics, Professor Eric Muskin, who has agreed to come to Thailand to support the events. We all look forward to his keynote speech and to his important contribution to build bridges. Kop Kun Kap. Thank you very much, Mr. Moravez, Chairman of the Board of Directors International Peace Foundation. And now it's time to, uh, to, for the highlight of the day. And uh, today I have an honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Eric S. Maskin. He's a famous American economist who attended Harvard University, where he received his AB in mathematics and PhD in applied mathematics. While being a research fellow at Jesus College, he received an honorary MA degree from University of Cambridge. He was a professor at MIT and Harvard. Currently, he's a visiting lecturer at Princeton University, New Jersey. Most of his work in the mid-70s was in the area of implementation theory. In the early 80s, Professor began his work on the subject of optimal oceans, and in the early 90s, he gave advice to the Bank of Italy on possible reforms in the system of oceaning treasury bonds. And nowadays, Professor works in diverse areas of economic theory, which strongly influence on many areas of economics, political science, and law. He is particularly well known for mechanism design, implementation theory, and dynamic games, which lead to optimal outcomes for all participants. Professor Maskin received various honorary doctorate degrees. Moreover, in 2007, he was awarded the Nobel Laureate for the prize in economics for having laid the foundations of mechanism design theory, a specialized forms of game theory. And today, Professor Maskin is going to give a special speech on why global markets have failed to reduce inequality. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Eric S. Maskin. Thank you for that very warm welcome. Uh, before I start, I just want to make sure that the microphone is working properly. Uh, can you hear me in the back all right? Good, good. <laughs> Not that you want to hear me, but uh, in case you do, I wanted to make sure that the uh, sound system was working properly. Well, it, it's, a, it's a very great pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you here at the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce on what I regard as uh, a critical problem that the world is facing today, uh, why uh, global markets have not uh, reduced inequality. It's unquestionably true that in the last 20 or 25 years or so, there has been an enormous increase in globalization. And by globalization, I mean the idea that more goods are traded between countries, and also the idea that there is more production of goods across national boundaries. What do I mean by more production of goods 
uh, across national boundaries? Well, take, uh, take the phenomenon that Americans and Europeans encounter all the time. Uh, they uh, often run into trouble with their computers, their, their personal computers, and need some advice about what to do. Well, they, there's typically a telephone number you can call for technical assistance, but when they call that number, they don't get someone in the US or in Europe, they, get, they typically get someone in India. And this is uh, a everyday example of the internationalization of production. We are instantly linked uh, to people everywhere in the world uh, as part of the production process. That's a very important part of globalization, which I will be emphasizing later on. Well, why has globalization occurred? It's occurred because, first of all, transportation costs have fallen over time quite dramatically. But even more important, communication costs have fallen uh, dramatically over time. So it, uh, we can now communicate through electronic means uh, instantly for almost no cost. There has also been a change in the international legal environment. Uh, we, we now have uh, very important international trade agreements which essentially lim eliminate most uh, important tariffs. This is true in North America with the North American Free Trade Agreement. This is true in Europe with the European Union. And it's now true uh, here in Southeast Asia with the uh, China ASEAN uh, Free Trade Area. So the, the, the world is gradually getting rid of trade barriers. And, and this has promoted globalization. Globalization has brought with it many promises. One promise uh, that, it, that its supporters made when globalization got underway was that this was going to help the poorer countries of the world. It was going to uh, create prosperity where before there was only poverty. And there's a sense in which this promise has been achieved, uh, at least to, to a certain extent. And, and the most spectacular examples uh, of uh, the success of prosperity through globalization uh, have been China and India, uh, both, of, uh, both of which have grown uh, by spectacular uh, amounts over the last uh, 20 years. And in both cases, that success had a, a great deal to do with the fact that they were operating in global markets. But China and India are very far from the only examples of uh, poor countries achieving some degree of prosperity through, through globalization. Unfortunately, there was another promise that was made which was not delivered on, and that was the promise that the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots in poorer countries would be reduced. In other words, it was suggested by the proponents of globalization that globalization would reduce inequality. Um, in this case, uh, sadly, just the opposite has been true in many countries of the world. Uh, and one 
particular example I could give you, it's, it's an example that I have studied myself, and so uh, I have uh, a, a great deal of experience with this example, but I could e equally well uh, talk about other examples too. I'm going to talk about Mexico, but I could be talking instead about Cambodia, for example. Much the same story applies to, to Cambodia. Uh, so Mexico uh, joined the, what's called the General Agreement on, on Tariffs and Trade, uh, which was an agreement which lowered the tariffs uh, that it faced uh, in 1985, so 25 years ago. Uh, and th this, uh, this agreement had the effect of, of reducing tariffs by, by more than 50%, and almost overnight, there was a dramatic increase in the amount of foreign investment in Mexico. In fact, over the course of five years, foreign investment uh, quadrupled, increased by a factor of four. Uh, at the same time, uh, incomes of white collar workers, these are highly skilled workers, went up by a very significant amount, 13%. But the wages of blue-collar workers, workers with, without uh, high skill levels, without much education, actually declined by 14%. And th this is... Uh, by no means a story which is unique to Mexico. The same story applies in, to many other countries in Latin America and also to many countries in Southeast Asia. Now you might ask, well, why does this matter? If, if the average prosperity of a country goes up, why should we care if inequality goes up, if, if the gap between the rich and the poor goes up? Well, I would argue that there are at least three reasons why we should be very concerned about this increase in inequality. The first is simply a moral argument, the, the, the idea that uh, we're all human beings and therefore we should all be treated equally to the extent that this is possible. But uh, we see that thanks to globalization, uh, different people are being treated extremely differently, so, which offends our egalitarian or moral instincts. But even if you don't accept that argument, uh, you have to remember that, particularly in poor countries, the bottom half of the income distribution corresponds to people in desperate circumstances, typically. Th these are the poorest people of the world. These are people who are living well below the poverty line. And so even if you don't care about inequality per se, uh, you may be uh, attracted to the idea that doing something about this desperate poverty uh, is an important imperative. And even if you don't accept that argument, uh, you might be a political realist and recognize that inequality contributes to social and political instability. And so from, from, simply for the sake of having a stable society, it's important to do something about inequality. So for all those reasons, I would submit that inequality is something that we must react to. Well, should we be surprised 
by the fact that inequality has gone up in poor countries because of globalization. Uh, it, is this something which is, which contradicts common sense or contradicts what we thought we knew? Uh, interestingly, the answer is yes. Um, there is a very well-established theory in economics, a very well-established principle in economics called the principle of comparative advantage. This is a, uh, a proposition that goes back literally 200 years. It goes back to the, to the early uh, 19th century uh, and the British economist David Ricardo. And it's been a very successful principle in predicting what has happened in all previous globalizations. The globalization that we're going through now is by no means the first. Uh, there have been at least three previous globalizations uh, in the last several hundred years. Uh, the, the most important before the current one was in the late 19th century, early 20th century, and in every previous globalization, inequality decreased, not increased. So uh, the theory of comparative advantage predicts that free trade will reduce inequality in poor countries, uh, and that means that there's something different about the current globalization. Let, let, me, uh, let me try to explain why the uh, theory of comparative advantage predicts that inequality should decrease. Well, any explanation for trade has to answer the question, why is it that countries trade with one another? And the theory of comparative advantage says that countries trade with one another because, uh, because these countries are different. In particular, they are different in their factors of production. What do I mean by a factor of production? A factor of production is just an input to the production process. So uh, 